what's shocking about this, and if you think back about the confidential witnesses, they had no relationship to Mr. Scott. This was a total stranger. They were trolling for votes with total strangers. It was almost an arm's length transaction. My point is, I have no doubt that this went on on a much massive scale than we know. Fortunately, we've got five or six confidential witnesses who have told out and out quid pro quo, given us out and out quid quo testimony of their votes being bought. There's clear evidence of the tight interrelationship of the vote buyer and, and Mr. Hart, Dr. Harden, and the testimony of Andy Dye that this defendant's brother-in-law and sister-in-law actually came and got confidential witnesses number two vote. And then when Mr. Salyer showed up later, the testimony was while I'm working with Carson. That was confidential witnesses number two's testimony. The court can, I can easily draw an inference that violations of the election law occurred. Earlier in this case, I mentioned, and we totally rely on this case, we think this is the law of this commonwealth. The case is Ellis v. Meeks. The chicken case. Huh? The chicken yes, case. I apologize, Your Honor. I told you it was a chicken wing case. It is actually, in fairness to Mr. Meeks, he gave boxes of chickens to precinct workers. You know, in all honesty, if some were to come to me and say, Mr. Kudersdorf, file an election contest, my opponent went to the polling place and made chicken available to the precinct workers, and I lost the election, I think logically one would think, that's not in the whole scheme of human behavior, that's not the worst thing that's happened on election day. The Supreme Court emphatically and unanimously uh, reversed. And in so, the Supreme Court acknowledged there's not a bit of evidence that this chicken caused a single vote to get changed. So I, I respectfully disagree with my, my friend Mr. Adams' argument that we have to show that. And, and here is where the, and we rely on this language. This is from uh, Meeks v. Ellis, uh, 9757, Southwest 2nd, 213. Furthermore, to require Pellet to show that a voter changed his vote as a result of Meeks' actions, Meeks is a fellow with chicken, would put an unreasonable burden on challengers by forfeiting them to subpoena each and every voter in the effort to find out who changed or his vote as a result of the misdeeds of the prevailing candidate. Was Meeks a candidate or someone else? Meeks was a candidate. Consequently, pursuant to KRS 120065, the nomination of Reginald K. Meeks as the Democratic candidate for the 11th Ward of Alderman for the city of Louisville is voided and the nomination is deemed vacant. Compare what Mr. Meeks did to the evidence in this case. Uh, I respectfully suggest that a, a fact finder uh, could say this is much worse than the violations that occurred here far exceed that. So we respectfully ask that you not dismiss this out. Response? Well, Your Honor, I don't think there's a, any evidence at all that Dr. Harden or Carson Montgomery handed out any chicken boxes or anything like that. There's just simply no evidence. This claim of a systematic pattern, there were 6,000 votes cast in this election, I believe. They've come up with a total of six that there's some question about. Now, of the six that they came up with that there's some question about, uh, you have to consider that at least one of those confidential witnesses had a long arrest record. A second confidential witness was getting uh, ready to be sentenced in Fayette County for a felony. So I think you have to look at the quality of that evidence. They don't have the quantity, they don't have the quality. <coughs> what Mr. Uh, Pillersdorf is asking the court to do <coughs> is because there were six questionable votes out of 6,000, none of this is tied to either one of the contestees, I guess throughout the whole election or deprive these men of their office. I mean, there's just not enough evidence. I would brief, I would brief uh, Mr. Adams and say that um, you know, as the case progressed, we, were, we discussed it from a petitioner's point of view that there was going to be a mountain of evidence, and there just hasn't been a mountain of evidence. There's been no evidence whatsoever linking Mr. Montgomery, Mr. Carpenter Montgomery, to 
to any uh, vote by or any other improper activities this election. This was just a hard fought election between two candidates and Cummins got defeated. He lost the absentee and the popular vote. And there's no evidence to show that Mr. Montgomery did anything wrong or knew that anything was being done wrong. Um, the court heard the, the, the manner in which the confidential witnesses were brought through the system and brought to the attention of the Attorney General. And I, uh, you recall that testimony, it speaks for itself. So we would uh, renew the motion for correct verdict in that across the country. Mr. Pellestorff, uh, do you agree with Mr. Adams that it has to fall under one of the three major categories? I'm sorry, do you agree with Mr. Adams that it has to fall under one of the three major areas? Uh, that we talked about. 